WCBI News at 10 starts now. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight on Cash Matlock. The Tupelo Police Department is currently investigating a shooting that took place earlier this afternoon at Hilldale Apartments. Now, police say they responded to a call on Monument Drive at 2 o'clock. There they found an adult female victim in serious condition, suffering from an apparent gunshot wound. Now, the victim was transported to the North Mississippi Medical Center ER. Police say they have information that indicates a dark blue Chevy Impala had driven through the complex and its occupant or occupants had fired shots. Now, this situation is still under investigation. Anyone with any information is asked to contact the Tupelo Police Department or the Golden Triangle Crime Stoppers. And it's the end of an era for our Starkville Church. The longtime pastor of Beth L. M. B. Church is leaving to take a position at a theological seminary in Memphis. WCBI's Andrea Self sat down with Dr. Lee Brand to reflect on the past and talk about what lies ahead. I mean, this is my family. I'm only a few months shy of having spent as much time pastoring this church as I spent living in my mom and daddy's house. You will always be my family. And Sunday morning, Dr. Lee Brand delivered his final sermon as pastor at Bethel Missionary Baptist Church in Starkville. When the congregation elected him almost 20 years ago, he was just 22 years old and had recently graduated from college. Wasn't married, had no children, had no pastoral experience. And uh, this may not be a good phrase to use uh, in reference to church, but I always say they, they rolled the dice on me uh, and they gave me a shot. That shot turned into 17 years of what he characterizes as growth and grace for both pastor and parishioners. In all the ups and downs of life, the same way I've tried to support them, they've probably done a whole lot better job supporting me. And now, almost two decades later, Dr. Brand has accepted a new assignment. This is one that will take him from the pulpit to the classroom. But over the past few years, my heart has really burned more to have an opportunity to really share with the pastors, with the people who are going to be leading the churches. He says his role as vice president and dean of seminary at Mid-America Baptist Theological Seminary will be an extension of what he's done as pastor at Bethel. Here I pastored members of a congregation. Uh, in my new responsibility, I'll in many ways be pastoring pastors. And I think a lot of the uh, legwork will be the same. If I've instilled something in these people, about how to walk with him, about how to spend time with the Lord, and they pass that through the generations. I'm fine with them knowing what I've taught, even if they forget the teacher. And I think those are things that are so necessary for any generation of ministers. I love you with all of my heart. And as he takes on this next assignment, Dr. Brand says he's not concerned with leaving a legacy here or there. My word here, my word going in, is always been I want to be faithful. I really don't care about being successful. I think those are worldly terms that we've kind of brought over into the church. And that's really what I hope to do, go and, and be faithful. In Starkville, Andrea Self, WCBI News. Well, in addition to pastoring at Beth L, Dr. Brand also served on the Starkville Octibaha County School Board. And the district will honor him with a reception on July 9th. Well, in life, everyone goes through something different, but choosing which path to go down is a decision that we can all relate to. A youth panel, also known as the Successful Millennials of the Golden Triangle, invited young people to come and receive life tips after graduating. Our Stephanie Poole spoke to a few of the panelists. For millennials and graduating college students, deciding the path to success can be hard. While some have their futures figured out, others may not. Event coordinator Sharon Jones hosted a panel designed to give advice and tips to those after graduating college. I think it'll take away their fears of branching out into passions and purpose that they probably wanted to do, and also their gifts and talents that they have, whether it be graphic design you know, or um, writing music, um, entrepreneurship. The panel includes alumni from Columbus and New Hope High School. These panelists pursued careers in major cities like Atlanta, Memphis, and Birmingham. Jones hopes this will give younger people more confidence to accomplish their goals. We just want them to get over their fears coming from a small city and entering into a big city and do big things. Panelist Hank Washington graduated from New Hope High School in 2011. Now he works as a graphic designer in Birmingham. Washington says getting out of his comfort zone was a major building block while finding a job. 
uh, motivating them to get curious because a lot of times those times I was confused about what I wanted to do and I was just kind of floating but uh, getting curious ultimately led to uh, opportunities that led to other opportunities. Fellow panelist Jessica Wright set out to Memphis pursuing her career in real estate after graduating from Columbus High School in 2007. I hope that somebody hears our stories and they're encouraged and that they know that they're already prepared for what's to come. You can go out, you can do other things, whether you go to college or not, but there's a bigger world out there and everybody has a purpose. Tiyoki Jones works as an economic developer in Atlanta. She says it all comes down to patience. You may think you have it all planned out, but you never know what God really has in store for you. Reporting in Lowndes County, Stephanie Poole, WCBI News. Well, there were over 30 attendees to come to the panel. And it's time now to take a first look at our forecast with meteorologist Kendall Smith. Kendall, what's it looking like outside? Well, Cash, a beautiful summertime day out there as well as evening. Take a look at our Alpha Insurance Sky Camera Network where we are seeing dry and clear conditions area-wide at this time. And we're seeing temperatures in the upper 70s and low 80s. 77 currently in Columbus. We're looking at 73 in Starkville and 77 in Winona. And as we go throughout the overnight hours, temperatures will dip into the low 70s. We're expecting a quiet overnight with mostly clear skies. All right, thank you, Kendall. Well, a disabled veteran of the United States Marine Corps is spending the next week living inside of the mall at Barnes Crossing, raising money to help other wounded military vets. Scott Burns will camp out the entire week at the food court in the Tupelo Mall as he raises money for a nonprofit known as Purple Heart Homes. That organization renovates homes to make them handicap accessible for wounded military veterans. Now, Burns injured his leg while in Marine boot camp. After 20 years and many surgeries, he had his left leg amputated below the knee. Burns says any donation can make a big difference in the life of a disabled veteran. 100% of the money will go to help veterans. If, if we raise $22,000, we're going to give $22,000 away. And I, my goal is 22 this year because we did 22 last year. But somebody just pointed out to me, if we raise $25,001 this year, then we will have raised $200,000 through the seven days for the troops program. So I would love to hit that $25,001 mark. Area businesses donated items that are being raffled off, and people can donate online and also look at the raffle items online at seven days for the troops on Facebook. Burns will be at the food court through next Saturday. Well, coming up, we'll tell you all about how to keep your kids safe this summer. More on that in this week's Mom to Mom. Stay with us. If you're a parent, you've probably experienced that bolt of fear that runs through you anytime your child is playing near a body of water, or any water for that matter. On this week's Mom to Mom, they'll tell you all about how to keep your kids safe and happy all summer long. Today on Mom to Mom, we're talking summer water safety. Joining us today is Kayla Barrett. She's with Aqua Tots. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for us. coming. So we're talking about water safety, and it's something that is definitely on my mind during the definitely, summer. Yes. When kids are around a body of water, any mm -hmm. body of water. So kind of fill us in on some things that we should, as parents should be aware of. Yeah, of course. So um, definitely get your children enrolled in formal swim lessons. It reduces the risk of drowning uh, for students ages 1 to 4 by 88%. Um, the next would just be any time that you're around a body of water, make sure somebody's watching your child. Um, you never know what could happen in a split second. It right. takes as little as 20 seconds to um, actually drown in a body of water. Water, and most often than not, it's completely silent. So just being very aware of your surroundings and your children. Um, the next would be if you ever have to use any type of flotation device, whether that be water wings, puddle jumpers, make sure that they are U.S. Coast Guard approved. Um, and last but not least, understanding the signs of drowning, knowing CPR, and just being very aware. Exactly. So you mentioned swim lessons. What is that perfect age to start swim lessons? Yeah, as soon as you can. Um, we here start swim lessons off as young as four months old, and that's because when you're starting them off younger, they're never going to develop a fear of the water. We teach them safety skills, so turning to their backs and things like that, that are very important, um, especially at a young age. Such great info. Thank you so much. Heidi. Yeah, thank you. All right, moms, connect with me on Facebook, and I'll see you next week. Mom to Mom is brought to you by Mom to Be on Wilkins Wise Road in Columbus. Well, typical summertime temperatures are in store for us over the next several days with heat indexes climbing into the mid to upper 90s and an isolated shower or thunderstorm is possible each afternoon. More on those details coming up next. 
your first alert AccuWeather forecast with meteorologist Kendall Smith. A really pleasant evening. Check out this sunset in downtown Louisville, Mississippi from earlier this evening. Look at all those colors. This is looking on our off insurance sky camera, and that's what we saw area wide was these kinds of sunsets. So it's a really gorgeous evening. Area wide temperatures are sitting in the upper 70s, 77 in Columbus, 74 a little cooler in Amory, 80 still in Tupelo, and 78 in West Point. Now, as we go throughout the evening hours, we will dip into the low 70s, but it will be a pretty pleasant evening. So on Doppler radar, we are currently dry, and we will be continue to be dry as we go throughout the overnight hours as well as by the time you wake up in the morning. So like I said, we will dip into the low 70s with partly cloudy skies expected for your overnight hours and winds will be calm. So if you were thinking about heading out to the car wash over the next several days, it looks to be good to go all the way through Thursday. The greatest chance to see some rain, however, is going to come on Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon and evening. So if you wanted to just hold off and let Mother Nature do that car washing for you, your best bet's to wait around for Wednesday. But I do need to note that not everyone will see rain. So we are going to stay dry for the overnight hours as well as by the time you wake up tomorrow morning. We are not even seeing hardly any cloud cover out there. But then the clouds do start to increase as we go throughout the day. By lunchtime, we're seeing mostly cloudy skies. And then by the afternoon and evening hours, we could see a few pop up isolated showers and thunderstorms out there. But for the most part, most of us will stay dry. And we are going to dry back out for your evening as well, heading into your Tuesday. So this is our current drought monitor. Nothing drastic at the time. A few counties are starting to pop up on it as being dry. So if we could see some rain over the next several days, that would be much needed to help out those counties in need. So on Tuesday, we are going to be dry. And we go throughout the um, afternoon hours, we could see a few isolated showers and storms try to pop up, but for the most part, we will be dry. The greatest chance to see some rain, however, is going to come on your Wednesday. Wednesday morning, we're just seeing mostly cloudy skies, but then by Wednesday afternoon and evening, that's when we could see some more widespread shower and thunderstorm activity, and then that will clear out of our way, leaving us with dry conditions heading into your Thursday. So, the heading into your the beginning of the 4th of July, we look to be dry. So if you factor in those heat indexes over the next uh, 24 hours, we could see the feels like temperature feeling like in the mid to upper 90s. 97 in Columbus, as well, 97 feels like temperature in Tupelo. So it's going to be another summer scorcher tomorrow. Make sure you have your ha water handy as well as a hat, sunscreen, sunglasses, because, hey, it's officially summertime. We are going to need that. So area-wide temperatures are going to top out in the low 90s. 92 in West Point, 91 up in Pontotoc, 91 in Starkville and 92 down in Macon. This is pretty common for this time of the year. We have warm temperatures as well as isolated showers and thunderstorms each afternoon. So we're going to keep this trend going over the next several days. You can see anywhere from a 20 to 40 percent chance of isolated showers and thunderstorms each afternoon with temperatures in the low 90s. But when you factor in those heat indexes, it'll feel like the mid to upper 90s and lows will be in the low 70s. The TCPS Eagles are recharged and ready to go. The next stop on the high school football tour is coming up next in Sports with Courtney. Your WCBI Sports with Courtney Robb. The TCPS Eagles are up next on the high school football tour. Young is the key word when talking out the Eagles. A young football program with plenty of young talent looking to put the rest of 1A on notice. Two for two. Since returning to 1A football, the TCPS Eagles have made back-to-back -back playoff appearances. This year, the Eagles want more than simply making the postseason. We want to be the first uh, class to host a uh, first-round playoff game. And we, everyone in the community is like, man, y'all really done good. Y'all, are y'all going to be able to take it farther? And we're, we're accepting the challenge. We want to be able to do it. We want to do it. We want to show everybody we can do it. I tell the guys all the time, you want to be able to play at Thanksgiving. If you can make it to Thanksgiving, then you've had a successful year. But our goal this year and, and years beyond that is getting in the playoffs, win, win round one, and then round two will take care of itself. We need to just keep on moving up in our program. Just, just It's going up a ladder. Just keep going up the keep going up the steps and uh, we're just climbing and uh, we got a we have a really tough division this year. Justin wasn't kidding. TCPS enters the loaded region 2-1A and will have to go through the likes of Nanawaya and Smithville to achieve their goals. Head coach Sean Holliday calling it the SEC West of high school football. There's not a week off. You know, every week you've got to come to play, you've got to bring your A game, and even sometimes when you bring your A game, you still might not win with this division that we have, but that's the beautiful thing about high school football. You take it one game at a time, one snap at a time, and we don't overlook anybody, but we don't dodge anybody either. 
Holiday will rely on a lot of juniors in 2019, but those returning making plenty of contributions last year. The one that'll stir the drink for the Eagles offensively is the coach's son. Kai Holiday returns at quarterback after leading a unit that scored 40 points per game in 2018. Our unit is very good. Um, we're going on a new offense this year, and we're really focused on how to do it well and do it our best. Your quarterback is that guy that keeps everybody calm, and that's where I look for him to, to really step up this year. And my expectations for him is in, in the leadership role more than what he does on the field. And if he does the leadership role, the field will take care of itself. The Eagles kick off 2019 at home against Tishomingo County. With TCPS on the high school football tour, Tom Ebel, WCBI Sports. 60 schools in 60 days with Tupelo Christian Preparatory School. Was brought to you by Zip Scripts. The high school football tour is only just getting started. Plenty of more stops still to come. We begin the week with the Noxipater Tigers, followed by the Oklahoma Chieftains and the French Camp Panthers. And then on Thursday, it's all about the Baldwin Bearcats to celebrate the lovely 4th of July. For those keeping track at home, go to our Twitter and Facebook accounts at WCBI Endzone to see the schedule. And of course, if you miss any of those stops along the way, you can always go watch them on our website at WCBI.com. It's the season for Major League Baseball, and pro ballers are knocking it out of the park in a whole new venue. I have more on that after the break. Stay with us. Some history being made for America's favorite pastime. On Saturday, Major League Baseball played its first regular season game overseas in London. Fans from all over Europe and the U.S. came to see the Yankees and the Red Sox play ball. And the Yankees were able to beat their biggest rivals 17 to 13, but this time it was the stadium named London instead of Yankee. Pims, ice cold Pims. The Brits did their best to make it feel like an American okay, ballpark. Cold beer as the New York Yankees and Boston Red Sox took their famous rivalry to the field in front of a European crowd. There's just something about the atmosphere of a ballgame where it's just, it's insane. Let's go Yankees! Fans flew in from all over Europe for Major League Baseball's debut. We supported the Red Sox for years, so we think it's awesome. But delivering baseball to the UK was no walk in the ballpark. Crews had just a few weeks to transform London's Olympic Stadium rolling out 140,000 square feet of synthetic turf. I think it's important um, to kind of put your best foot forward. Um, these two teams uh, give us a unique opportunity to create buzz surrounding the game. It wouldn't be a proper baseball game without some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. Let's hey, go Yankees! Let's go Yankees! And without a bit of trash talk. We have class, not, not like the Red Sox. <laughs> They're classless fans. No, just kidding. <laughs> She's Boston, I'm New York, great rivalry, great baseball. How do you keep marital bliss when you got a Boston Red Sox and a Yankees fan in the house? Because someone always wins. Yeah. Major League Baseball hopes to be the real winner with the London series. They sold out both games this weekend. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. The Red Sox and the Yankees did play another game today. The Yankees victorious yet again. They won that game 12 to 8. Next year, the Chicago Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals will be the ones making the journey across the pond to keep the MLB tradition in the UK alive. Well, speaking of the Chicago Cubs, the Cubs falling to the Reds today. The Reds end up taking the series 2 to 1 after getting a 8 to 6 victory. The Cardinals on the other hand hold off the series sweep with a 5 to 3 victory against the San Diego Padres and the Braves fall to the Mets 8 to 5 in New York. That's it for sports. We'll be back after we take a quick break. Well, a chance for an isolated shower or thunderstorm is possible over the next several days with temperatures topping out in the low 90s and lows will be in the low 70s. But the good news is that by Thursday for the 4th of July, overnight it looks to be dry and it looks mm -hmm. to be pretty favorable for the July. That's definitely some good news because I know a lot of people have some outdoor plans, obviously fireworks, things like that. So hopefully it's going to clear up, you think? Yes, exactly. So just have to make it through some just afternoon summer showers and then we'll be good to go. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. We'll see you back here tomorrow night.